So today, I think it's the 29th. Good. So I'm, would you like to pick or you want me to pick a problem from the book or you want me to make one up? Make one up, please. Okay, then. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I am going to make one up. I would say x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1. First question, what type is it? Type 3. Do you trust me? I trust you. Thank you. But tell me, why is it type 3? Because the, the numerator has degree 1 more than... The degree of... The denominator. Awesome. That's the reason why. Not because you trust me, but because the degree of the top is 3, the degree of the bottom is 2, the difference is 1. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So... Do I know then for sure from the very beginning that this function has or does not have a horizontal asymptote? I wouldn't say so. Horizontal, no. Slant no. Definitely. Exactly. So slant asymptote, not horizontal because it's type 3. Very good. Okay, what will you do next? Mandatory. The next step is absolutely mandatory. I'll give you a hint. Yes, but because of that, before I get to the domain, what am I really telling you with this line? Simplify? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Exactly. I have to factor. Good. Awesome. So, how do I factor which one? Let's start with the easy one, which is the denominator, which we have an agreement on. How do I factor the denominator? Awesome, thank you. Now let's think about the numerator. What is this? What is x cubed minus 1? One? one of them has to be x squared, right? x squared minus True. 1. True. How do we call this first? Awesome. Difference of cubes. Perfect. How do we factor the difference of cubes? One Let me refresh your memory. Yes, go ahead. I want to say it has to do with a binomial and a trinomial. Excellent. Thank you. It has to be a binomial times a trinomial. Awesome. Good. So now let's identify the binomial. That part is not difficult, right? Here's my question. What cube is x cubed? X. Of course. If we factor the difference, the, the binomial has to have the difference and the trinomial has to have the sum. I don't even talk about the last one. The last one is always positive. So there is no discussion there. Good. So now my next question is, what cubed is 1? Good. Now, the trinomial is the same with our agreement from day 1. Without the 2. Without the 2. So, can anyone give it a shot? I can at least tell you the first term, x squared. Awesome. Plus, without the 2, just the product. x. Plus, the second term squared. 1. That's it. Let me make something clear here. You may remember or you may not remember. This piece, we can set it equal to 0 and see what happens. But do you remember what happens here? If I try to solve x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0. So let's say we don't remember. How do I solve this equation? Completing the square? Never. Mm. Unless you force me to. Mm. It's not factorable. I cannot take the square root. I will not complete the square. So what is left? Exactly. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2. What type of number do I have under the square root? Complex or negative. Correct. Correct. Not real. Since they are not real, then, and the leading coefficient is positive, 
what type of, if you wanted to graph just this piece, I just want to discuss the sign. If you want to graph this piece, how would you graph it? It does not touch the x-axis. There are no real solutions. So how will I graph this? Does it have a minimum or a maximum? Minimum. Correct. So if it has a minimum and it never touches the x-axis, what would be its sign forever? Positive. Because I need to determine the, the x and y intercepts, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm doing this discussion. If you were to graph that, would that be a complex? Like it does not touch the x-axis. That's all it means. Okay, okay. The solutions don't exist. Oh, that's It's right. way above the x-axis. I got you. Okay. Which means I want, to, I want it to establish the sign. Right. It's not that it's never going to be zero, but it's always positive. Right, I got you. Because it's, it has a minimum. Okay. And it does not touch the x-axis. So when you find the question, sorry, question, the difference of cubes, so the first binomial is always negative, I mean, the If it's a difference of, yes. The sequence is negative, negative, positive. Gotcha. If gotcha. I have the sum of cubes will be positive, positive, negative. Right, right. And you, okay. you always start with a sign of what you are factoring. Gotcha. If you're factoring the negative, which is the difference, you have to have the difference in the binomial. I see, okay. And you can't do that for the sum of cubes, right? Yes. You can? Yes. Oh, okay. Not for the sum of squared. Gotcha. For the sum of cubes, yes. You would have x cubed oh. plus 1 equals x plus 1 minus. times x squared minus x plus 1. Wait. No, the last term is always positive. We don't even talk about okay, it. Gotcha. Yeah. Good. So then the numerator is x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered so far. We picked a function that is type 3. How do we know? The degree of the top is 3, the degree of the bottom is 2. The difference is 1. The next step we performed was to use the difference of cubes to factor this into this binomial and this trinomial. What we established with this little chat here is that this is not ever 0, and it's always greater than 0. So this will always be a positive quantity, all this. Only. That's what we are discussing here. OK. Now let's look at the function. What will be my next step? As you see, I have a lot of preparation here before I even start the chart. OK. Both so, x minus 1 is cancel out. Correct, but not before I state restrictions. x cannot equal plus or minus 1. Correct. So the domain of this function will be negative infinity, negative 1, union, negative 1, 1, union, 1, infinity. Only after I establish this, I do take the liberty to cancel one factor. But I, I have to state the domain on the original function before I simplify. Now I am free to simplify. So now this function really looks like this. x squared plus x, the simplified form is this. OK. Of course, still type 3. A degree of the top is 2. The degree of the bottom is 1. Still a difference of 1. Good. So now I'm ready to start the chart. So please dictate the domain one more time so I can put it in. Yes? Zero has to be in the chart. Good. Yes? Good. What do I write under negative one and one? Can't be that. That's it. I don't have a number to write. Awesome. That's all I needed. Now moving on, what do I write under this symbol about x equals negative 1? And what do I write under this symbol about x equals 1? Look at the simplified form. I don't know the symbol, but I know it, that, that it, the function is undefined for those terms. Absolutely. But two different things happen there. They're not going to be the same. Oh yeah, one's a hole in the graph, the other is Which one is, stuff. exactly, I which one is know. the hole in the graph? Let's yes? say negative one. Um, no. Hmm. Positive one. Exactly. Positive. Why is not negative one? Different. Because the factor is still there. The um, factor corresponding to this is still there. It still creates this problem. Hmm. So x minus one is a VA. One more time, what will be x equals one, though? Hole. Yes. 
x equals 1 will be a hole in the graph. Once you say that this is a VA, what do we know happens there? Immediately, I have to write that. that. Right, so you want me to put infinities here. Correct. What I don't know is something very important. What I don't know about these infinities. Signs. Exactly. I will be using negative 1.1, a number very close to negative 1 on the left, and negative 0.9 on the right. So let's plug it in. Negative on the left, positive on the right. So I would agree. So what did we say about the sign of this? That's why we used... Always positive. Yes, I don't have to plug in anything in there. It's always positive. It's way above the x-axis. No matter what I plug in it, it's going to be a positive number. Way above. That's why we discussed that here. Is that clear? Anything you plug in. It's way above the x-axis. Good. So when I plug in negative 1 plus 1, what do I get? Other than Tom. Yes. And when I plug in negative 0 0.9 plus 1, what do I get? Positive. Do you all agree with these two? Good. Now I need to write here something, and I need to write here the same thing. How do I get this? I plug it in. So plug it in in the simplified form. I cannot plug it in in this function. It will be 0 over 0. But I can plug it in in the simplified form, and I have to. So when you plug in 1 at the top, what do you get? Three. When you plug in 1 at the bottom, what do you get? Zero. 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 So this is 3 halves, and this is 3 halves. And what will the whole be? 1 comma 1 comma 1.5. Very good. Okay, so we know that the numerator can never be 0. We tried. So the function can never be 0. But I have to find what happens when x is 0. What happens when x is 0? It's 1. It's 1. What is the last thing that I need to determine? End behavior. And in other words, together with a slant asymptote. If I determine a slant asymptote that looks like this, what will be the end behavior for the function? From the positive. What if I determine a slant asymptote that looks like this? Opposite. Exactly. From positive infinity to negative infinity. I know I look silly, but I'm just hoping that that triggers your memory. Okay, good. How do I determine the slant asymptote of this function? What do I have to do? Perfect. Can I use synthetic? Is this type of no. function? Yes. yes, because the um, denominator is x plus a number or x minus a number. All oh, right, right, right. Would you like to use synthetic division or would you like to use a long division? It's up to you. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But we have to decide. Doesn't matter to me. Very good. What goes in the box? One. Careful. Negative one. Right. So the denominator of synthetic division is this. If I have x plus 1, it means this, which means a must be negative 1. So in the box, I have to write a. So one, bless you. So did you get your notebook? No. That's it right there. Thank you. You're welcome. I left it on the piano for you. Okay, so how much is A? One more time. Negative one. Negative one. Which coefficients will you give me so I can put them up here? Other than Tom. <laughs> one, one, and one. One, one, and one. Awesome. So one for this, one for this, one for this. I bring down one. Negative 1 times 1? Negative 1. 1 minus 1? Zero. Negative 1 times 0? Zero. 0. And I box in? Zero. 1 as the remainder. So can anyone give us the quotient? Just the quotient. One. What degree? If you say 1, that's degree 0. I divided degree 2 by degree 1. 
I divided degree 2 by degree nice. 1. If I write x squared, then this is x, and then x. this is the remainder. So when I divide degree 2 by degree 1, the answer has to have degree 1. So that's why it's x plus 0 if you want. So it will be x plus 0 plus 1 over x plus 1. But this is not part of, and 0 is no need, this is not part of the slant asymptote. So this is 0, it's not there, and the remainder is not part of the uh, slant asymptote. So the slant asymptote is only y equals x, the quotient. If this were 5, I would have said x plus 5. If this were negative 3, I would have said x minus 3. But since it's 0, it's just x. So this is the slant asymptote. Very good. So coming back to the chart, I write y equals x slant asymptote. And the final question for you is, how does x look? y equals x. Does it look like this? Or does it look like this? If it looks like this, I know the end behavior of the function. Because it has to follow the asymptote. There's no discussion there. If there is a slant asymptote, the function eventually has to approach it. If it's a horizontal asymptote, eventually the function has to approach it. Okay. So on the left-hand side is very good. And on the right-hand side, Positive. right, because it follows y equals x. Mm -hmm. Very good. OK, so let's try and make sense of the information we have and then make a decision. If there is anything that we need or so on and so forth, OK? The function is coming from negative infinity approaching the slant asymptote. And it has to come to a maximum because it drops to negative infinity again, again towards the left-hand side of the vertical asymptote. So it does this, approaching the vertical asymptote and approaching the slant asymptote. So it has to have a maximum. Then on this side, it's coming from positive infinity. It crosses the y-axis at 0, 1. It comes to that point that is 1, 3, uh, 1.5. And somehow it has to turn. I don't know where and how. But it has to go back and approach the slant asymptote. The rest, the other side of the slant asymptote. One more time, from positive infinity, comes down to cross at 0, 1, then it appears to go up a little bit, has to turn, I'm not sure, it may, it may turn here, we'll see, comes up to 1, 1.5, 1. and then approaches the horizontal asymptote towards infinity. When I graph a function with asymptotes, what do I have to graph first? The Thank you. That's mandatory. How many asymptotes do I have to graph for this function? Three. Um, well, well, two. Two. Okay. The first one? X equals negative one. Thank you. X equals negative one. Good. Next one? Y equals X. Very good. And we know how to graph Y equals X because we grafted, yes, we grafted in transformations. We know that this is the line that bisects the graphs of, it's always the graphs of the of function and the inverse are symmetric. So with respect to and so on and so forth. Good. So now this side is very clear. From negative infinity to negative infinity. It cannot connect in, in, in negative infinity straight. It has to come to a maximum. It's like similar to negative x squared, a maximum. Good. On the other side, I have to present 0, 1. I have to present 1, 1.5. 1. 1, 1.5. It says this is 1, this is 2. 1, 1.5. 1. And now I have to follow my chart from positive infinity comes down to 0, 1, and it goes up to 1, 3, 3 halves, or 1.5, and then continues towards infinity. 
I'm not sure that it turns here. It's very possible. I do not know this maximum, but I know what to look for. I don't know um, if the standard viewing window will work. I'll start with the standard viewing window, and then I'll make the adjustments the way I think they should be made. OK, so in y equals, how many functions do I have to put in? Just not now, two. Two functions. The first function is? x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1. And then the second is y equals x. Thank you. Don't forget parentheses. So x cubed minus 1. Oh, of course, I did it again. Minus 1. Close the parentheses divided by x squared minus 1. And the second function is x. OK. I'm going to try the standard viewing window, see what happens. I can go back and adjust, of course. OK, so good enough. So it's coming from negative infinity approaching the slant asymptote, coming to a maximum. Here's the vertical asymptote. It turns, goes down to negative infinity. On the other side, it's coming from positive infinity. It looks like it's, it's turning here. I don't see my 1 comma 1.5. I'll, I'll check it in a minute. And it's approaching infinity following the vertical asymptote. So I want to determine this maximum. I see it's between negative 3. I cannot put negative 1 in the function. And negative 1.2. So second and calc, I want the maximum, which is 4. I want between negative 3, enter. And I'm just going to scroll. Make sure it passes the maximum. Enter, enter again. I don't want to guess. So I got negative 2, comma, negative 3. I'll put in my chart, negative 2, comma, negative 3. And now I want to see what happens here. And I want to find the minimum. So second and calc. Stop me if you have any questions, please. Or you fell behind or you need help. OK, so I'm here at negative 0.5. I scroll to the right. That's good enough. I know it passed the minimum. Or do it again if you want. As long as I'm not uh, at 1.5. I don't want to guess. Just give me the minimum. Oh, OK. So it does turn on the y-axis. This is the error of the calculator. What does this mean, e and negative 7? e and negative 7. You have it means to move the decimal point to the left seven times. Perfect. So this is the error of zero point negative. Zero point zero 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 five. This is the calculator telling us it's zero. Okay? So it does turn, I don't have to correct my graph, but I want to see a zoom in our claim of an open point or a hole at one comma one point five. So I change the viewing window between 0 and 2. Well, the scale of 1 is fine. But y minimum, I want negative 1 to positive 2. And I want a graph, and I want to see that little jump. There it is, right there. At 1, there's a little hole at 1.5. Another way of checking that is with second and table. So second and table, what do you think will happen if I plug in 1? You'll get 2. Or, no, no, 0. <laughs> Why did I say 2? I don't know. 0. Oh. You get an error. Exactly. Okay. I, thought, I, thought, I thought the hole was out. Oh, wait. It's undefined, right? Yes. It's undefined, right? I thought right. the hole was somewhere else. The hole is at 1. Oh, yeah. 1, comma, 1.5. Yeah, Good. Yeah. So how do we feel so, about um, type 3? I think I, I think I get it now. Regardless of the question. Yes, please. Um, how do you calculate 
change and actually know you that I'm giving it to you. You can borrow my calculator. But I mean like okay, let's say I don't like without a calculator. You, you can't. It's you have to really complicated. Yes, because you need okay. calculus. You need to find the derivative okay. and subject to zero and then study the sign of the derivative. Yeah, but like derivative, I was gonna ask you what is that? I mean it's, it's the rate of change of the function. The rate of change of that's the derivative. Okay. Okay, other questions for me? Anything else? That is that the spring break? Would that cover, um, or that like spring break? Did it have anything to do with any of these uh, guys that we're going to have on the test? You're talking about the uh, fun rational function? The, um, no, that uh, spring break work that you gave us, that one page thing. Would any of those guys be on the test? What we covered that before the spring break? Yes. Um, well, no, that sheet you gave us, there's one of the ones I couldn't do. I was wondering if you could do that one. Yes, of course. Which one? Yeah, we should. We have this sheet, so I don't know which one. Okay. Was the first problem? Was the second problem? Was the first one? Um, I posted solutions. It doesn't matter. Even if I posted Yeah, it was the first one that I got sent on. Okay, let's work on the first one. So, negative x squared minus x minus 1. Is this problem going to be too quick? Oh. <laughs> Not all of it. Not all of it. So it doesn't touch the x-axis. Okay. And you will have a maximum because okay. it's the leading coefficient is negative. But let's do it. Let's do it absolutely. So we want to look at the function we had on the uh, on that classwork. That was. So did you have this form or the other form? Did you have the negative x squared minus x minus 1, or you had that function, x squared plus x plus 1? Um, how do I have that color sheet that we had? So okay, very good. Good. Math. Okay. Good. So again, I already posted solutions just in case you missed something. Good. So what type of function is this? Quadratic. Quadratic. So I start with a shape. What is the shape? Yes, it's a parabola, but you remember when we talk about the shape, we are saying it has a minimum or it has a maximum. You cannot have both. Maximum. It has a maximum. The leading coefficient is negative 1, therefore the function has a maximum. That's what we mean by the shape. Because a parabola can have a minimum, right? Or it can have a maximum. And no Otherwise, it's not a parabola. Correct. So number two, what do I have to determine next? Again, these will be listed for you during the test. I mean, for on the test. So I'm not sure you're doing the, uh, the vertex. But it doesn't matter, really. The order for the parabola is not really important. The or well, As long as you find everything that is requested of you, you're fine. Okay, very good. So how do I find the vertex? Once I see that the function is not given as the completed square. If the, com the function was given with a completed square, I would have determined the vertex in a blink. But here it's not. I will not spend my time to complete the square. Absolutely not. But because I have a different way of finding the vertex. What is that different way? Negative, two over B. negative B. Remember, it's part of the quadratic formula. Negative B over 2A. Okay. So X will be negative B over 2A. So X of the vertex. Negative. What is B? Make sure that these are in descending order, otherwise we will identify A, B, and C incorrectly. Yes, over 2 times A, which is negative 2. I see three negatives. Negative. Very good. Negative 1 half. Awesome. Next problem. Um, I'm sorry, next step. Yes, to find the y coordinate of the vertex. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Sorry, if I don't drink a little bit, I start coughing. Because I talk too much. Okay, so f of negative one half. Careful, careful, careful how we plug it in. This negative is outside, but when I square a negative number, I get positive one fourth with minus in front. Negative with negative one half is positive one half and then minus one. Should I perform this step one more time or is it clear? I should? Are we okay? Please. I'm okay, but I don't know about. 
That's why. Okay, so I have to replace x by negative one half. So when I have negative one half squared, I get one fourth. But there is a negative in front. Is that okay? Yes. So that's why I have negative one fourth. Everyone, please. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Then I have negative and negative one half. So that's why I have positive one half. And then negative one. Is this okay? Good. So then I'm looking for. The equals zero. I'm looking for the least common denominator, which is I cannot add these fractions without the least common denominator, correct? Good, which is two. Which is four. Very good. Four was not multiplied by anything. Or if you want, you can write one. Two was multiplied by so it needs a 2. And 1 was multiplied by 4. Very good. So please dictate the top. One plus two. Uh, one. Correct. Plus two. Perfect. Minus four. Minus four. Do you all agree with negative one plus two minus four? I'm no, you're not. So negative four and negative one. Negative five plus two, negative three, negative three fourths. Is this okay so far? So far. Good. Number three. Can you already give me the range of this function? And you could say, I haven't even graphed it. How can I figure out the range? You can. Because you know it has a maximum, and you know what the maximum will be, or is. What is the maximum value of this function? Exactly. So the max is negative 3 fourths. So I can already find the range. Other than Tom. I'm paying attention, so. I want you to pay attention, please. Very good. Very good. Five. X intercepts. That's why I did this before I asked you about the x intercept. Because because it includes that thing. point. Well, it's not an open point. Right, why is it not an open point again? Because it's the vertex. Vertex is always like yes. always the smallest point. Yes. I'm sorry to clarify that. Right. So here's why. This is not a rational function. Okay. This is a polynomial function that is defined everywhere on the planet. Right, right. Got it does it. not have a denominator. Exactly. It's a friendly function. Yeah, that's why with the rational function. Every can, point you know, exists, it and it's continuous function. Okay, gotcha. Yes, very good, uh, very good point. I was making very good point. Here's the point. Remember, when we talk about asymptotes, vertical, horizontal, slant, we're not talking about polynomial functions. As I've seen in all previous tests, students graphing polynomial functions, continuous, smooth functions, and then in the middle of vertical asymptotes. Or a horizontal asymptote. Before. Makes no sense, right? So a function cannot have a vertical asymptote if it's defined everywhere. It will have a vertical asymptote where it's undefined and if the factor doesn't go away. So Otherwise, if you have a turn, any point that's on that turn is considered, it would be, I mean, if you had a point on that turn, uh, that'd be considered like a whole point, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, depending on the function. Depending on the function. Right. right. But these are, this is a polynomial function. It's defined everywhere. It will not have any type of asymptotes. All these polynomial functions are continuous functions. They, no jumps, no interruptions, no asymptotes, nothing. Friendly. OK. Good. So can anyone tell us the x-intercepts for this function? Okay. Of course it doesn't. Because look. It's all in the negative direction. The maximum is negative 3 fourths. It does not, it wished it touched the xx, but cannot. Because its maximum value is a negative number. None. Number six, y-intercept that always exists. How do I determine the y-intercept for any function? Plug in 
x for 0. Awesome. So please plug in 0 and tell me what is the y-intercept. Negative 1. Correct. So 0, comma, negative 1. 7 and 8. I need the axis of symmetry, please. Yes. X equals negative 1 half axis of symmetry. And it always should be written out like X equals, and you have to write the horizontal or the horizontal symptoms. So there is no asymptote. No, no, no. But like when you write it, you write it like X equals negative 1 half instead of just like 1 half or negative 1 half. Yes. Yeah, I have to write it as a. No, I, you're right. I have to write it as an equation. Okay. Because if I say to you negative 1, you should ask me, what do you mean? Are you talking about the x-coordinate of a point? Are you talking about a line? Are you talking about this line? Are you talking about this line? Are you talking about what? But if I say x equals negative 1, I know exactly it's a vertical line that is at negative 1. And in a rational function, it's going to be the asymptote? Yes. Okay. Unless the factor goes away. Unless the factor. Which means it becomes a hole in the graph. Oh. Okay, um, I don't need this because we, I already wrote it. I already wrote the max. Good, so we are ready now to graph this function. Since I know that everything happens under the x-axis, I managed to plan ahead and think about it. So I start with a vertex, negative 1 half, so I'm going to take a bigger unit. So negative 1 half and negative 3 fourth will be this point. I meant to write 0 here. OK, then I have to continue with the axis of symmetry. This does not mean that the function is odd or even. It only says there is a vertical line going through the vertex that will help me keep the graph in shape. So if I am the axis of symmetry and I graph a parabola like this, then you know I have no idea what I'm talking about, right? Because it's not symmetric. I'm showing you totally, uh, totally asymmetric graph. So I have to show you this. So the axis of symmetry just help us out, helps us keep the graph in shape. That's the only reason we graph it. So then I have 0, negative 1. I will determine another one, another point that has to be symmetric. And then I'm, I'm fine with this graph. You can determine other points if you want. Just try to make it as symmetric as possible. So just the point I was making is don't show something like this. Because that's not a parabola. These two branches have to be as symmetric as possible with respect to the axis of symmetry.